Welcome back to the pregame show. The Rough Riders finishing up their home slate tonight, and I'm uh, here joined by starter Nick Tepish of the Texas Rangers. Uh, Nick, your first rehab outing uh, of your career here on Tuesday. How was the, the process for you as a rehab starter and not as a minor leaguer like you were a year ago? Well, uh, you know, the process, the biggest thing is just trying to get healthy again, and, uh, you know, it, it took quite a while, and, uh, you know, it wasn't something I ever really had to go through before, so it was definitely a learning experience, and you know, I got through the game healthy and felt strong, and you know, those were the two biggest things I take out of it. Was it uh, was it strange being back here uh, since this is a place you, you spent a lot of time last year in such a different role uh, as far as just being around the clubhouse, around the guys, and getting ready for the game? Uh, you know, it, it, you know, it's definitely nice to see all these guys again because I played with a lot of them before, and you know, seeing coaching staff and and being able to work with Jeff for a few days again, and you know, it's it's really. Uh, really beneficial and we've seen you around here a lot more than, than some of the other rehabbers that have come through is that by your own choice uh, how you set your schedule of when you want to be here in Frisco versus Arlington or is that by the Rangers design uh, it's it's pretty much by logistics I guess is the best way to put it because they were out of town and uh, you know it, it saved me from having to fly to Seattle and you know be there for a day or two and then have to fly back and then you know it, it basically just keeps me in one one spot and not have to do a bunch of traveling to get the things done that I needed to get done and, and you know it's really the the best best way to go about it. Joined here by tonight's starter Nick Tepish uh, on the pregame show. Nick, uh, you talked a little bit about the injury, the elbow inflammation. Uh, was that something acute that happened? You really felt it during one game, or was it something that progressed and got worse and worse? Uh, you know, the my last game, I didn't really feel it. I mean, it felt good during the game, and then. Uh, Really, after I got done icing, kind of stiffened up on me a little bit, and then especially the next, the next day, you know, I, I kind of felt something, something in there, and you know, felt not some. It wasn't normal, is the best way to put it, and um, it was just just something that came on the next day, really more than anything. And tried playing catch, and it didn't feel good, and um, you know, so I, I mentioned something, and we had the, you know, got it checked out, and it was luckily it wasn't anything worse than it was. And you said you haven't really experienced something like this before. How do you go through such an unknown process? Do you have people that uh, have kind of helped guide you along the way mentally just to know, you know, hey, it's okay that you feel this way today. It's okay that, you've, you know, that you're feeling what you're feeling, uh, that, that, the mental side of the rehab process. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, other guys have been through it, been on the DL, you know, talk to them and kind of how they, how they handle the situations and also the trainers kind of kind – of guiding me down you know what what's going to be normal like through the throwing process and stuff like that and um you know th those are really the biggest things just kind of what to expect you know knowing that every day is not going to necessarily feel better than the, the one before it you know you, you may have a day that you don't feel quite as good and just how to handle stuff like that and not get frustrated with it so what was the big uh the big landmark where you and the rangers felt comfortable that you could take the next step and, and get ready for your first rehab start well it was to, to back it up before that, it was uh, before I started throwing again, it was mainly just to be pain free before I started playing catch again. And then um, just the throwing program, because of the time I, I had taken off, it, it takes takes a while to get your get your arm strength and your your, you know, just your overall stamina back up. And it's uh, it's a little different than a, than a position player. You know, a position player could probably go out there a few weeks ago, maybe a couple weeks ago and be fine. But because of the nature of the position I play, you know, you have to build up the stamina and build up the arm strength, and it's it's a little bit of a longer process. Here with Nick Tepish, uh, who starts tonight for the Rough Riders against the Hooks. The, the last time you faced the Hooks before Tuesday was uh, back in the postseason last year, and you had one of your best starts uh, with the Rough Riders. Did that bring back some memories when your first outing back here at the AA level, you were pitching against the same team you wrapped up last year against? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it was, I mean, it's, basically a whole new team from what I remember you know a lot of those guys I actually saw you know a good amount of them actually playing for the Astros this year and but um, you know it's it's you know I guess it's kind of a coincidence maybe more than anything but uh, you know I was just happy to get back out there again. When you come right back out here after just uh, three days rest what was the thinking behind the decision to not go uh, a normal a normal amount of rest before your next start? I think it was just mainly based on the workload. It wasn't it wasn't like I went out there and threw 90, 100 pitches. It was it was 40 pitches, and it was a pretty controlled controlled uh, environment, I guess. And uh, you know, throwing the less amount of pitches, you're not gonna 
you're not going to need as many days to recover as you would if you threw a heavier workload. There's been a lot made of uh, your cutter slider pitch that's changed over the last year. Uh, how is that process like? I mean, it reminds me a lot of what people talk about you, Darvish, all the time, how he can manipulate this one pitch uh, and change it into really seven or eight different varieties just based on the plane and the break. Talk about that pitch for you and how you manipulate it. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say I throw it seven or eight different ways like, like Darvish may, but, um, you know, it's probably really mainly mainly two different ways. It's it's based on kind of if it's a right-handed hitter or left-handed hitter probably more than anything, and um, the location of it is probably the biggest thing. You know, I mean, if, if you're going to throw it up in the zone a little bit, it's not going to have quite the depth that it would if you're trying to throw it down in the zone. You're definitely going to get more depth throwing it down in the zone. So that, that's re- it's not like I... I try and throw it differently or try to have a better or a different outcome. It's just kind of the nature of where I start it and where it finishes. How did you actually change that pitch? Does it have to do with the arm slot or the grip? How hard do you throw it? Uh, actually, you know, it's the same grip as I had when I threw a cutter, and I think it was I. It was just trying to get on, you know, just trying to stay on top of it a little more and, um, you know, just try and make it a little – a little bigger break, maybe. Here with Nick Tepish, uh, it was part of the reason you made the big leap forward this year. And coming into spring training, I don't think a lot of people tabbed you as a potential number five starter. And then the rumbling started that you could be the guy, and it turned out you were uh, just open the season as the Rangers' number five starter. What was it like for you going through that process uh, where all of a sudden there was more and more media coverage? Uh, I'm sure people asking you questions uh, about whether or not you're going to be that guy. What was that experience like week to week uh, out in surprise? You know, the biggest thing was just uh, trying to take it day by day and not not really try and predict the future or look into the future too much and I was fortunate enough to have you know a lot of guys up there to talk to about the situation you know they helped me with how to how to handle the situations I'd be in with the media and um, just the different environment and um, you know it was it was it was a great experience and you know going going into it you know I, I never thought I didn't have a chance because anytime you're in a spring training setting no matter you know if it's minor league spring training or big league spring training you're trying to win a job and that was you know that was a mentality I took into it and that's that's really the the biggest biggest thing for me how did you uh, how did you finally find out uh, was it something Ron Washington told you something from the Rangers front office uh, what was that experience like for you yeah they they uh, uh, called me in the office and um, Wash and Mike Maddox and JD were in there and they uh, they explained what was going to go on, and it was it was kind of surreal a little bit because you know I didn't really know what to think at the time, and um, it was it was it was a good meeting. I mean, it was a great meeting, but um, you know it, I can't really, I can't really explain it. It was it was definitely something that I'd been working hard for, but I, I also realized there was there's still a lot more work that needs to be done. Who was the first person you called once you found out? Oh, my parents. I mean, it's that's kind of the I guess the the no-brainer right there you know you have to call your parents because they've been through so much with me and growing up and getting me around you know from different games and practices and all of that stuff so I mean that was without a doubt the first people I was going to call so lastly uh, in your big league time got off to a pretty good start um, what is the what have you seen adjustment wise from the hitters second and third time you've seen certain teams uh, what do you notice that they're doing differently in how they attack you uh, you know and each time you face a team, and not even just the same team, each time you're out there, you know there's more and more video that that accumulates of your starts and your pitches and situations and all that stuff. So even if you haven't faced somebody and you know you've you've had ten starts, they still have ten starts to look through those situations that you've been in, and it gives them time to prepare and kind of maybe what to expect if you fall into a pattern and just trying to not fall into a pattern from my standpoint and just pitch pitch how I pitch and um, just, you know, stick to who I am and not try and change because other other teams are picking up on little things. All right, well, thanks a lot for your time. Good luck, and uh, good luck the rest of the season with Texas. Thank you. That was Nick Tepish. We'll be back after this on the Frisco Rough Riders Baseball Network.